How you guys doing? Uh, so for my people on um, YouTube um, watching, thank you so much for all your uh, likes and comments and subscriptions. If you have not seen us before, go catch our uh, podcast on Apple and Spotify, or you can go on YouTube and subscribe. There's like a little red button. You can hit that bell button also next to it so you can get notifications. Um, but we're back, man. Another week. Season three, right? Season three. Usually what I do is actually I introduce my uh, team always, you know, in the studio. We have a couple of people missing today, which is okay, you know. <laughs> things happen, you know. We're here, though, right? We're here. Yeah. Um, Gerald uh, is out uh, taking care of some business. We have Jerry, my man, the myth. Yes, I always sir. tell him. How you doing, buddy? Great. I'm All great. right. Wonderful. And then uh, we have Mr. DJ P in the house. <laughs> What's up, Peyton? What's up, what's up? You getting those gigs? Yes, sir. People want to know how your DJ thing going. They want to see you progress, dumb, you know? Dumb so, Jack's an awesome app. Yeah, we're going to talk about that, like, you know, later part of the show. Let people know about it, you know? Um, that's what we're here for, right? Encouraging all the new yep. entrepreneurs and people coming, uh, up and coming new, you know, young people just trying to get in business and finance and, and you know, artists, do. you know, all of that good stuff. And then we have a great, great, great guest in the show, Mr. Ron. How you doing, Ron? Thank you, Obi. I'm fantastic. Thank you Mr. For Ron me. is sponsored by uh, Farmers Insurance, uh, Robinson Agency. You can call Destiny Robbins um, at 682-516-1989. By the way, quick note. Jerry, she requested we need an intro <laughs> for her because she loves your intros for all the rest of them. That can be done. You know, so uh, she loves the little flashes or whatever it is that we do, like, you know, show her mm -hmm. name and everything. But she, it's like, I want an intro or can I go do the video myself, you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, Ron, how you doing, buddy? I'm fantastic, man. Thank you for having me. All right. Awesome. So, Ron, we're going to, I guess we, uh, what we do here, uh, beginning of the show, we just kind of like, you know, talk about uh, where you come from, like, you know, where you're born in Texas and, you know, how you were raised and... You know, all that good stuff so people can get to know you, you know. I know you sent me like a whole bio, which right. I, <laughs> I'm going to pull it up a little bit. But uh, i like you to just start off, you know, uh, just telling people, like, you know, um, I know you have a company also, you know, M MMC Roofing. Is that what MCC you're doing? MCC Roofing. M yes. MC Ro Roofing? MCC. MCC. Okay, I think yeah. it was, I had it wrong over Chaco, here. No big deal. Um, and then you've been construction real estate for a long time, and your granddad was actually a yeah. landlord. For and then you, yeah. I mean, it's a cool story. I kind of read the whole thing, you know, that uh, Ron used to be like helping her, uh, the granddad, for a dollar uh, a day. Yeah, or something? for a dollar, dollar a day. A day? Yeah, something when, like yeah. that. When I was growing up, my uh, my granddad, my dad's dad, his second career that started the year I was born was he started buying up all the houses in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Somebody would pass away, move, whatever. How long was that? Like, what no, was it? Oh, gosh, this would have been probably in the 60s and 70s, and then he kept buying through the 80s, probably. I mean, the dollar's pretty good, man, for yeah. that time. Yeah, around. it Come was, on. because he could actually buy a house back then for probably 30 or 40 grand. Wow. Yeah, I mean, we're talking a decent home. I mean, wow. it's, you know, not... Like 1,800 home. square feet or something like uh, that? Probably about 1,500. Mm. Yeah, and they all were sitting on probably half an acre. This is on the outskirts of Houston. Oh, and wow. And it started as a hobby, and then by the time I was in high school, he was running a stable uh, supply of about 15 houses that he kept oh, wow. rented. So um, he did all of his own maintenance. He was a Depression-era guy, so he wasn't willing to pay people to do that, so that was his full-time job. So when he called us down to visit, we weren't going to visit. 
Okay. What it usually meant was somebody had moved out and turned the power off, and uh, the refrigerator still had food in it, and uh, there was holes in the wall. And Oh, my God. Yeah, and we started off getting a quarter an hour. I'm not making this up. And my grandmother got mad at him, and we thought we were going to get a real raise, and he went to a dollar. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that... Yeah, and so that's, that's... A dollar a day, though? A dollar a day. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty good, though, for that time around. You not know, really. No? <laughs> no? Uh, I mean, uh, believe me. Not, I mean, not really. When, you're, when I was 15, I was... I don't working. know how it was back then, but um, I remember um, working like I was like in... I was 16 year old, but uh, any salary was good salary. I agree. For a kid, you know? You know, I, these days... Uh, any Apple phone is good phone. <laughs> you know, yeah. these kids, they just want, like, you know, iPad and iPhone and everything else, you know, you name it, Generation Z, as you call it now. But, you know, we came from, I think I have a little bit of same uh, values from back in the day, you know, the way we were raised and stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, very, um, you know, conservative family. You know, mom was a teacher and all that, you know. Dad was an entrepreneur, you know. So what did what did you where did you start it? You, you you kind of told me a little bit about it that you tried to work for somebody but it didn't work out. Right. And you yeah. just so, like started working for yourself. Well, my I grew up working for my godparents um, who owned a tree and landscape company. I got my first job when I was twelve, mm-hmm. which was working on the weekends and um, begging for that because I grew up in a family that was almost mostly Mm self-employed. And I worked for other people, obviously, through high school weekends, that kind of thing. And then when I was 19, I got into the bar and restaurant business. Drinking age was uh, was, uh, 20 back then, I think, and you could work at 18. And so that's self-employed because you're working for tips, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got through college doing that, ended up taking a while to get out of college, ran bars and restaurants. But again, all on tips, all that type of thing. I didn't get a, quote, real job where I had a salary and had like regular hours until I was probably in my early 30s. And I did that for about nine months. Wow. And it was horrific. (laughs) <laughs> and um, I did not do well in that environment. I don't like meetings for meetings sake. Mm-hmm. And um, I ended up leaving that job and opening a fence company. So, yeah, it's... How long you had that? I had that company for two or three years. Um, that was one of your live and learn type experiences. You need a lot more money than you think you do when you start off doing stuff. And um, I've been in the roofing business now for 13 Mm -hmm. But I've done multiple entrepreneurial things when I got out of, or 1099, when I got out of college, um, I had done well enough in the bar and restaurant business that I couldn't live on a starting salary. I got a regular job, right? And so I ended up going into the oil and gas business and I became a licensed. I I, I read that and I was like, uh, okay, how did that, like going from that uh, being in, you know, in different type of business, like more... I mean, because the oil and gas is completely different. Totally, it's, totally. it's like night and day. It's yeah. not, not not retail, not customers, no customers. It's you're just dealing with the corporations at the end of the day, right? Well, actually, I was a, a licensed you're, broker with an investment right. firm. And so 100% of my days was spent on the phone trying to get um, accredited investors to the phone to invest in our oil and gas investment opportunities. It was a I radical, have. shocking shift to go from getting home at 4 a.m. Uh-huh. and going to college, which I thought was hard, and I found out that was extremely easy uh, comparatively. And it was by far and away probably the hardest thing I've ever done to convert to being in my desk at 7 o'clock in the morning making 300 cold call dials a day. I learned a lot, but it was incredibly difficult. And I never got used to the feast and famine nature of that because you could do extremely well. Or absolutely horrible. Cold calling is not for everybody. No. It's, it is it, not for everybody. It, I mean, I, I no. do it, and I'll take it in grand assault. Like, you know, I'm like, ah, whatever, shake it off. You know, then, okay, whatever. But, you know, if you don't want to, you know, talk to me, that's fine. Some people are going to cuss you out, or they're going to tell you <laughs> all kinds of names. You know, I call them my mom's house, you know. Uh, just get off my you phone. You get that as a real estate? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, because we call expireds, right? Oh, uh, we gotcha. call expires and uh, for sell by owners, you know, so we can we get all kinds of people. I mean, it's not for everybody. Um, buddy of mine just quit like after second or third call. <laughs> he got a bad one. <laughs> Somebody cussed him out on the phone, and he wanted to find his address and everything. I was like, "No, bro, don't do that. It's not for you." 
The cold calling is not for everybody at all. You know, it's just, it's tough. So two or three calls, wow. Um, but, <laughs> you know, you are dealing with uh, you know, investors, obviously, you know, they're obviously thorough and, you know, um, and that could be a little bit difficult, but I can I can see any, any cold calling is difficult, you know, so I, I can understand that. So from that, so you kind of like work behind the desk. Yeah, totally. You just hated it? I did not enjoy that. Oh, my God. But you made good money, though? At times, it was amazing. Commission, 100%? Straight commission, Straight, absolutely. oh my God. Because the first year, they told me that it would be six months to a year till I made my first sale. Mm -hmm. So I went to work from seven in the morning to 5 p.m. I changed clothes in the bathroom and then went and bartended from 6 uh, p.m. to 11 or 12. And I did that for the first year, so I had income. Did you love bartending more, the oil? No. You didn't um, like both of them? Well... <laughs> The, the money opportunity in the day job, but when you're not making any money and mm -hmm. it's 1099, they told me straight up, you're going to need a second job mm -hmm. or you're going to need a lot of money in the bank. Well, I was just out of college. Mm. So I had to work two full-time jobs for probably 12 to 15 months. I didn't make my first sale until 10 months. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And you stick with that job for 10 months? Oh my Well, you've God. already done six, you've already done eight. And when they told you going in, it was going to be that hard. I, I wouldn't do it now. I don't think the kids <laughs> these days. Uh, I didn't know any better, man. I don't, I it's I so much social media. I don't think that uh, uh, kids or younger generation have a patience to do that. Stick with the job for 10 months, not getting paid in this type of environment. Social media and cryptocurrency and day no, trading. I mean, dude, you got to think. <laughs> yeah. that was, I'm 55 and that was... No, like, I'm just saying, I'm kind of giving you like... Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, no, no, I'm with you. That, that was, was in 1992. And dude, we still didn't have computers at our desk or anything else. All of our uh, mail outs and everything were done by hand. So and, you didn't have no outlet at that time? No. And so generation now is like, you know, uh, including millennials... Um, you know, everybody has like, have it good. Cause you can start a business like in, like that, oh, yeah. you, you know, you couldn't do that. Go daddy, <laughs> put a, put a Google, <laughs> right. Uh, right. You know, put the website together and you know, here we go. You know, yeah, you couldn't do that. You, you know, then, so, sure. well, I mean, but it did teach you something, you know, um, a principle of like sticking with something oh, yeah. for long term, you know, at least give it a chance to survive because it's stages for it, right? Business stages sure. is like, you know, you have. Certain stages, you know, you have to pass first two years of your, uh, you know, just being in a business, 1099, before even you can start making any, you know, any progress. I totally you know, agree with that. You know, because you're going to lose a lot of money in the first two years if you really want to have a successful business, you know. So from oil, so what did you do next? And by the way, bartending is awesome. It I was mean, fun. would you go back? And just open up a tiki bar somewhere, like you know, no, uh, in, no. you, you wouldn't do it. It's an extremely brutal business. It's very, very, very late at night. It's uh, very stressful, and not conducive to anything positive. Oh yeah, not good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so gonna no, leave no, it at that because no, this is gonna be on YouTube. But uh, not a good lifestyle to be a good person, good father, good husband. No. Yeah, you know, be be consistent, be home, be awake when the kids are going to school. Not a good, not a good deal. No. Uh, we, <laughs> we have to talk about that. You know, uh, as far as being an entrepreneur and uh, balancing your personal life and whatnot, it's very, um, it's difficult. Uh, so, no bartending. What did you do after that? Well, well, I'm trying to get to get people to know you. So, I'm trying to like kind of walk them through like from how you started and you went to college and you went this, right. and that, and, and that. You so know, that so. Did, that worked. I did that for five or six years. I didn't get out of college until I was twenty six. Okay. Okay. Um, I quit for a couple years. Uh, I had my father passed away. During oh, I'm that, sorry. During, oh, thank yeah. you. Uh, very long time ago. Um, mm -hmm. He passed away during that time, which uh, slowed things down some. And um, so I was in the oil business until my early thirties, mm -hmm. and then that's when I made the shift to try to get a real job. Mm -hmm. For some stability, mm -hmm. uh, because I'd gone through a uh, marriage breakup and mm -hmm. was trying to get you know a little more, not so up and down. Mm -hmm. And I gave that a shot for just under a year. And that what did you do? Uh, I was a sales manager for a credit card processing company, and I ran a sales force of uh, outside salespeople. Okay, from inside the office. And Another difficult job. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. 
Yeah, not at not, all. Not at all. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, we'll leave it uh, at that. Any straight commission job is oh not easy. Oh, my God. None. I mean, because people don't have the drive. You, you have the drive to do whatever you can. I have it. And I know Jerry, if he's doing his rapping, he's going to have a 120. And he does a lot of good stuff, by the way. And then same thing with Peyton. He wants to do DJ. You know, he yeah. loves DJ. It's, it's more of what you love, you know. And then if he has, gonna, he's going to have people working for him, his team. And, you know, um, it's more building that morale and team. It's just tough. It takes a long time to build that. It does. And, you know? and, and fortunately, too, if you're not really sure what you want to do, which I didn't know what I wanted to do, because mm-hmm. it was a hard transition to come out of the restaurant and bar business where the money was, you know, not amazing, but it was really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was making more money while I was still in college, probably twice as much as my friends who had graduated and got starter jobs. So it was not very motivating mm-hmm. to try to get out very quick when everybody's not making near the money I was making. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, there was you know a lack of some foresight there in the future and all that, you know, but it still made the transition into quote day life very difficult because it was once you get to a certain level. And you've experienced some success. And at that time, that was a lot of success for somebody my age. And then you have to realize that, wait a minute, how am I going to go back down to this per- place? It's not a matter of pride. It's a matter of mathematics, how, you know, because you create a life. I had gotten married. I had a baby on the way and a bunch of other stuff going. And That's in your 30s. No, that's in my 20s. Okay. That was in my 20s. That's when it, I went into oil and gas gotcha. and worked the two jobs. It was because I thought, well, maybe I can stick with this long enough that there'll be enough money there that even though it's straight commission, you know, they, you know you're going to build something, all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. What I found in that particular industry was that it was really volatile. There'd be really good times and then really lean it's times. It's just always roller coaster in yeah, sales. Yeah, it's, it's very roller coaster, right? Yeah. And, you and better it, save up. Y- yes. You don't save up, you're not going to survive. In any type of sales environment, you do any sales, you better save up. Um, so from that to that, um, credit processing, what did you do next after that? Uh, let's see, a credit card, pro- then I opened a fencing company, believe it or not, because my boss knew that I did that on the weekends and we mm-hmm. still was doing construction stuff. The whole thing, like staining and yeah. fencing? And all everything. of that, yeah, okay. absolutely. And because I grew up in a construction, you know, real estate background family, I mean, how hard is fencing, right? It's not that tough if you can land the job. It's not that tough. Um, It's, you know, just... Were you doing it personally? You had a crew? uh, I was doing it personally at the time while I... Because I was doing it on the weekends. Oh, that's tough. Trying to create extra money. Oh, yeah. And then my boss literally could tell at the credit card processing company that I couldn't stand my job. Mm -hmm. And he was like, listen, man, love you, dude, but um, this is not what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. And I like to work with my hands. At least I did at that time. And he said, you should go do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I walked out the door that day on a Friday, went and sold a fence job and started working on it on Monday. So I did that for a few years and uh, found out that the markets change, prices on things go up and down. And that's when we had a huge labor shift mm-hmm. in Texas where... Which uh, we're going through it right now also. Oh, my gosh. And right now. We and, could definitely talk <laughs> about that. You know, we're going to get into it and all the yeah. lumber shortage and all of that stuff and oh, yeah. labor shortage, you know, which people, most people don't know. If you don't watch Bloomberg in the morning, <laughs> you're not going to know. You're not going to mm-hmm. know. It you're is. just going to be like, oh, okay, we don't have any houses. But what's the what's the reason behind it? You, you know, you got to look into that. We could that. talk deeply about yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Um, so from fencing... And you're going through that, and how old are you at that point? Probably mid thirties. Okay, Probably so what did you do? Mid thirties, and then I dabbled in insurance, real estate, uh, flipped a few houses mm. with a buddy of mine, and uh, learned that you can't uh, flip houses emotionally mm-hmm. because we built them like we would, you know, built them perfect, and mm. we ended up having them sit on the market nine months and. I think I netted out about five bucks an hour for that mm-hmm. experience, and we did all the work ourselves, 100% of it, and it was a big learning experience. Well, it is not easy to fill up a house, for sure. And no. then you got to know, when you, you can't get too attached also, you know, with the house. I got very attached, which you is know, a huge So mistake. that's because you're, you got to look at your N, N ROI, you know, at the end of the day from whenever you're flipping in. So average, our, uh, average uh, percentage for an investor to flip a house uh, right now, obviously, it's non non existent because there's not non. By the way, for the investors, there's houses coming because uh, uh, there's um, government is actually about to remove um, the unemployment benefit. 
oh, yeah. pretty soon. Yeah. And a lot of people are not going back to job. They've been collecting unemployment. And, um, you know, here we go. So we can, I might have like a little bit of a 2008 effect, not as much, but you might see some houses coming as foreclosures and stuff like that. I work in foreclosure uh, uh, with this Zoom company. It's a Mr. Cooper affiliate. Uh, they do REOs and foreclosure. But going back to that, so flipping houses and um, that experience, what would you do after that? I just uh, want to let no, people no, no, know how many... No, no, I'm just trying to track it in my head because once that went on for a while. I stayed in that arena for, for quite some time. And then toward my late 30s, I started doing more construction stuff and went back into like home remodels and things of that nature and just did that for myself on a small level. Mm -hmm. And then in my early 40s is when uh, actually the, when the bottom dropped out in 2007, 2008, I actually had to sell cars for about a year. And uh, that was an Man. experience. So you've been in sales forever. Yeah, yeah. And I did that for a year, and that actually went okay. And then what happened you was... You have so much experience, man. Right. I'm going to be calling you a lot of times. <laughs> well, this is, is going to be a regular weekly well, I'm call. I'm glad you look at it positively you know? because a lot of people don't. But uh, I mean, just depends on, like, you know, uh, I'm in sales. so well, I've done a lot I, of different things. And I have a team that of sales people. Right. So I eat it up. I just <laughs> eat up all the knowledge and all the wisdom, you know, because I... I'm all about it, you know. Um, selling a car, how was that, man? Um, well, so which, which uh, dealership, by the way? Well, I actually worked, uh, I met a guy um, in a restaurant in Frisco who had just bought a dealership. I was in there, and things were going rough because 2007, 2008 was going on mm -hmm. into 2007, and I could not get hardly any work because nobody had any money, and mm -hmm. things were going through an extremely rough time, and I was in a restaurant in Frisco, uh, it was uh, glorious, mm -hmm. and I met this guy in the bar, mm -hmm. and he had he just started talking to me, and he's like, "Hey, man, w what do you do?" And I told him, I said, "Yeah, I'm, you know, I might, you know, be looking to do something else." And he goes, "Well, I just bought a car dealership," and I thought to myself, "Man, are things that rough? You mm -hmm. know, do, am I am I there? You know, because I I just didn't had never done it before." And he gave me his mm -hmm. card and invited me to lunch the next day, and after sleeping on it. He offered me a job, and I moved to Denison, Texas, and went to work. Not at, even here. It was Denison, six, 60 miles north, and I went up and sold uh, Hondas, Toyotas, and Nissans, mm. and I did really well. Uh, I mean, the, I mean, yeah, if it's that, you know, just outside Metro yeah, Plex, it was. you're going to have good clients. They come in, they're going to buy it. It was a lot of fun, but mm. when it got to be wintertime that year and into the spring, it's a lake town. And mm. 2008 hit full blast. And mm. so yes. pe people stopped buying everything, mm -hmm. right? And um, I was sitting with a buddy of mine in a golf cart with no people on the dealership. We were waiting for a potential customer to come in. And he said, hey, man, I'm leaving. And I said, mm -hmm. well, I'm not surprised. I said, I've got to figure out something. i got to pay the bills. And um, he goes, man, have you ever done anything in roofing? And I said, yeah, I roofed when I was in high school all the time. And he said, man, I'm going to go work for a roofing company. And I made all this money a couple of years ago when I worked for him in Florida. And I said, why not? Mm -hmm. Went in, got a job, and I've been doing it ever since. Roofing is amazing business. Yeah. and I You got to know. You got to know the right relationships, though. Well, exactly. And I didn't know anything about insurance, which I know a, a, an enormous amount about it now. But it ended up being a really good gig. I mean, it's had... Just like everything else, it's had its ups and downs. We haven't had any good hail in Dallas in probably about four or five years. So it hasn't been, you know, just off the charts. But I was really fortunate in the beginning. I worked for a company that was really well established and ended up doing, you know, mm -hmm. moving into management pretty quickly. And um, it's, it's, like I said, I've been in it 13 years now, almost 14. And I've had my own company for seven so you you still working for them or you have no your own, i have no? my own gig oh okay, okay. no I, yeah, I, I, I that's my, no i opened my own company okay. in uh, 2014. that's awesome and i've had it since then and then i started with them in uh, 2008 and then left there uh, after five years roofing is just like you know another uh form of like you know real estate uh, agents type type deal you're still gonna sell you know you have to sell it uh, you still have to do the lead generation. You still have sure. to build a relationship. You still have to do lunches. Kind of similar. Lead gen now has become probably one of the most important things because there's so much competition. Mm -hmm. Not just in what I do, but in what you do, what anybody does. 
you know, 10 years ago, um, you know, having an SEO company and having somebody who could do digital marketing. You have to be, you have to like think outside the box nowadays for lead gen. Right. It's because there's, you know, I don't know about you, but I get probably eight to 10 solicitations a day by phone and email and text, which who, I'm not that, that's not my forte. So I don't even know who would or wouldn't be good at it. I'm, I'm going to tell you a secret after the show, what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> Fair I'm enough. I'm not going to give it out. If you guys want to know that secret, I will sell it. <laughs> Call me. I'll do a coaching session for like $200 for one hour. <laughs> I'll do it. I think I just bought Numbers don't lie. I'll show you my numbers, you know. Um, okay. Talking about numbers, we can talk about mortgage rates. Rates, real quick. Uh, this part of our programming is brought to you by Evolve Bank and Trust. Uh, Tyler Gold app. Um, Tyler Gold app. His number is 614, sorry, 614-499-1808. So mortgage rates are, haven't been changed. Uh, they're still about the same in uh, mid twos and mid threes. You know, you can get a FHA or conventional loan. Um, we do have a heroes program. I always tell everybody we have heroes program for teachers, firefighters, police department, uh, all our uh, healthcare workers, frontline healthcare workers. Thank you so much for what you're doing on COVID uh, front lines, and we always appreciate you. Um, you know, so call us if you are a uh, hero. Um, we can probably help you out, and I have uh, some great, great uh, incentives that we can offer you. Also, uh, down payment obviously is covered. Um, and for our regular folks, we do have a down payment assistance program. Uh, max limit is like depends on county. Uh, so we have T-Shack and a set program. Uh, it's offered by uh, Texas, you know. It's, it's a bond financing. So the rates are a little higher for, uh, for those programs. Uh, they're in fives and six. But, you know, if you are trying to save up for down payment, you don't want to wait around because this market is crazy. The, house, the housing market is going to keep going up. It's not slowing down anytime soon. Uh, give Tyler a call, get pre-approved, get a hold of me. My name is Obi with XPT Realty, and uh, we can definitely help you out. Don't wait. There's all these Californians. There's all these New Yorkans. Mm, true. There's all these other people coming here. There, th well, there's a reason they're coming here, because they don't have to pay, you know, state income tax. The property taxes are low here, you know, comparably, you know. But, you know, the housing is still low. The price-wise, average house is right now 275 average house, so for sale. So everywhere in California or New York, you're not going to find that, uh, 1,800 square feet home. We're going to talk about it in real estate uh, segment after the break. Uh, but this is our mortgage rate update. And uh, we have our Peyton. Peyton is going to do our halftime show. He's going to play some music. Uh, for you guys, um, we don't have an open mic today, um, but we do have Peyton. Peyton, what's up, brother? What's up, man? So we're gonna take a short break, and when we come back, you know, we're gonna talk some more with Ron. Ron is sponsored by Farmers Insurance, Destiny Robbins. Uh, call Destiny Robbins at what's our number? Six eight two five one six one nine eight nine. Thank you. Hindsight, looking back in my old self Motherfuckers hanging on my coattail Trying to check in and stay like a hotel But I put them on the curb like, oh well I can't carry them all Got my shovel out, trap out, bury them all Dreams getting big, I'll be scaring them all Walking on the edge, I don't care but they fall Try to tell them how it is, but they take it as it is I don't matter, time to give, I'm just trying to feed my kids Break me off the payment that I need so I can live I'm a bounce out, don't me, I got the deal This an occupation, keep in conversation I ain't got no permanent obligation I'll be out, I'll be eating. Wanna buy them, I'll be waiting. Focus on my shot, call me Sony A7. I was born to rock in the 81 7. I've been on the block like an automatic, automatic, automatic weapon. Popping off like a Glock, they afraid to come stepping. Birds of a feather, block together. I flew south for the winter, they were stuck in the weather. I was trying to get better, they were taking my tether. Put my foot up on the pedal and I said I'm on that. They'll speak ill, soon as you say, just how you feel. Hang you with the run when it gets you killed. Shit is real They gon' speak kill Soon as you say just how you feel Hang with the run when it gets you killed They don't wanna know that shit, shit, shit is real. real Shit is real Yeah Just follow your emotion Follow your emotion Shit is real 
dead, but I promise you, my heart is real. Remember hanging with the dope fiends. We were thinking they were OGs. Blowing dope smoke to the boat clean. Killing myself slowly. Tell me why I'm hanging with people that are dangerous. Put myself in situations that I really can't predict. Never had my back when I was deep up in the shit. I had to handle it myself. Cause everybody, everybody, everybody acting traitorous. That was in my teen days. Now I'm getting older and I focus on my green plays. I got kids to keep safe. I've been on my shit. Don't give a fuck about the street rain. You can have it on me. I just wanna be great. I don't see regret when I look to the past. See the people I left out. Only better for was all I swear. But I can't be the one to get you there.
fucking with you. Member of the mob, counting racks, I cannot lend you. Once you do me wrong, terminate it, cause I've been through. Different type of wrong, fucking trapping what I'm into. Watch out for Round, terminated cause I been through Different type of round Fucking trapping what I'm into Watch out for Me and my hammer, I don't need help cause I'm chill pajama Fuck all the rest of my talented mamma I am a blessing, I'll show you example All of the cash, I got all of the ants Round of applause and they give me the rents Nigga be fried than a bitch on my kids All of your cars and I'm running these bands I don't know that hoe no more No I don't Be the case. I ain't gotta fucking talk, bitch. You already know. I say I got money, but it already show. D's on my belt and my wrist don't go. I ain't giving no deal, but your bitch gon' blow. By the end of the flow, I done made a little mo. Please pick up your jack up your jaw when I bow, little hoe. You ain't no big homie, your ass little bro. Class get your pole. You ain't finna see me until after the show. Get the cash and I go and make it fashionable. 55 bang. The name still brain. Motherfucker, what you claim? Claim it. Fifteens bang, whole click big banking. Fifty five bang, and the name still bang. Motherfucker, what you claiming? Claiming, claiming. Fifty five bang, and the fifteens bang, whole click big banking. Fifty five bang. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Set up, set up, set 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 up. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Set up, set up, set up, set up, set up. Oh well, you know what I'm bang. On the fight, cross me, guys, leave your brains hanging. On God, been gang gang since party train. Since the youngin' been running around with this naughty thing. Catch your up and let the shotty bang. Hit his top and send him flying with the airplane. Play, play, play. Go up, that's on bro. I ain't scared, man. Spat a op, then we slide. That's some head thing. Oil melt. When it's up, then it's stuck there. Whoa, with us, we tear it up. Get no fucks, yeah. Clean the nigga noggin' up like we cut hell. How the fuck you beefing with the game but need bust bust fell? We got change on your lane. This ain't even fell. If I apply pressure to your chest, you gon' need L. Bang, motherfucker. Bang, motherfucker. You get shot for throwing up the wrong thing, motherfucker. Gang. Hey. Name still brain. Motherfucker, what you claiming? Bang. With them 15s bang. Whole click big bang. Bang. And the name still brain. Motherfucker, what you claiming? Bang. And the 15s bang. Whole click big bang. Bang. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Set up. Set up. Set up, set up, set up. What's up, what's up? What's, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up? Set up, set up. Set up, set up, set up. They rather see me fall 
ball, then see me ball. But that don't bother me at all. Get up, good look, bitch. 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 When they see me, they see G's. The sign of teens and soldieries. Watching me like a TV. They watch, watch, Probably cause they see me on TV. Now they finna see me at the top. Senioritas on me cause I got the quack quack. You see the pimping when I walk. Running through these hoodies, hoops like mom. Let them bitches stop and stare. Let them hate it, I don't care. Let them talk about my hair. Let them talk them in the air. I got bitches I don't share. I got first look like a bear. I got curls for the girl. I can see it in their eyes On the rise, I didn't count them by surprise They rather see me fall than see me fall But that don't bother me at all Get up, good look, bitch 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 Get up, good look, good look, good look, bitch Get up, good look, bitch Get up, good look, bitch Get up, good look, bitch Get a good look, take a picture, looking clean, I'm rolling with my nigga. Bossed up, I know you can't miss us in a drop top full of bad bitches. Hard not to stare when you see a player over here, over there. Your bitch look at me and drop her underwear. See, I'm a motherfucker pimp and I just don't care. In the game, make it dance in my name. Give a brain, switch your lanes, can't paint wanna roll through. Fuck a lame and I swing in the bank. No, we ain't the same. I can't change that I told you. And I can see it in their eyes. They envy me. But the real is on the rise, on the rise, on the rise. Can't get rid of me. Things I'm rapping for. Yeah. Differences I'm actually dope and I can actually flow. Maybe you just need to take notes. They wanna be a rapper. But nobody got no skills for real. Don't nobody wanna hear what you say when you really ain't keeping it real. They wanna be a rapper. But nobody got a clue what to do. So they out here faking and lying instead of speaking the truth. They wanna be a rapper. But nobody got no skills for real. Don't nobody wanna hear what you say when you really ain't keeping it real. They wanna be a rapper. But nobody got a clue what to do. So they out here faking and lying instead of speaking the truth. They wanna be a rapper. All right, all right. Thank you, DJ P. Hey, by the way, um, make sure um, you guys are actually, if you have, um, what's going on, Ron? You good? Uh, I thought he was grabbing my shorts or something. No, I'm just kidding. What? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hey, man. Uh, in the cord. Uh, if you are looking for uh, somebody to do your weddings or if you have a birthday party, or anything like that, give a, give a shot. Peyton, give your information real quick. So Peyton is trying to get DJ gigs. My you information's got. in the description on YouTube, or my number is 817-522-2638. Just call me or text me. Yeah. So, you know, because there's Apple Podcasts. That's why I was trying to give the number out. But, yeah, man, we're back, Ron. We're back. 
All right. Well, what we're going to get into is, um, so you took us through all that journey. You've been through a lot of different, you know, entrepreneurial experiences, jobs and businesses. You sell down in uh, roofing for past 13 years. Yeah. So let's talk about your uh, business. So what do you guys do? Because like, uh, it's roofing and construction, right? It is. So. And um, we're mostly in um, roofing, which is roof gutters, all that type of thing. Anything that would have to do with an insurance claim. What was the name of the company? It's Real Myers quick. Construction Just, is the, the construction side of then MCC Roof. MCC Roof. Okay. Which, okay so <laughs> the reason for that is that. That's nobody, a hail dropping. That's a roof. hail drop. Is it? That's okay. a hail drop if you hear that. Yeah. Nobody can spell Myers. So I had to change the domain to MCC. The way I spell Myers is so weird. It's a lot yeah. easier for everybody to remember it. But so uh, can you spell it out? And just yeah. Google. Yeah. So that way for the audio part yeah, of it. It's M-I-E-A-R-S. It's three vowels in a row, which makes no grammatical sense. And there's yeah, a whole family would, history would, story about that. Com? Uh, no, it, the, it's mccroof.com. Okay, so that's what you're going to go. mccroof.com. For a free quote, you know, call uh, call Ron um, if you need oh, a roof, roof replacement. Yeah, and we also do exteriors, painting, siding, all that type of stuff. And right now we're doing a lot of interior stuff from the water damage and things like that. Is it still going on with the, all the storm? Yes. Um, it's slowing down to the standpoint of, you know, like all the flood of claims, but there's still so many people waiting to get their claims adjusted that are you know, way under adjusted. And there's lots of people still not living at home. Mm -hmm. We're still probably going to see, it's probably gonna be another three to four months before things get completely caught up because everybody's so far behind right now. I guess that's part of, uh, part of the thing, you know, people are, you know, COVID and then we had a big storm and People well, just well, haven't you, listed a yeah, home. You touched you know? it on it earlier, though, yeah. is we're... In, in Let's a, talk about it. A Might drastic well. labor shortage right now. Drastic. Because if you think about it, there's never been a time in recorded history in our last couple hundred years that the state of Texas has frozen for five days, mm -hmm. right? And, and nobody knew how to run... You know, it happened so fast. And so there's never been any time and there probably won't be in our lifetimes where you have from Oklahoma all the way down to Galveston Island mm -hmm. where people have no water, all the pipes are frozen. Houston mm -hmm. even had it worse than we did mm -hmm. um, because I, we know people down there. I have family down there and it's just the amount of claims is overwhelming. There's not enough insurance adjusters, not enough anything to get it done. And then the claims that aren't paid correctly, you have to wait to get those fixed. So this is like once in a lifetime experience. So we're also seeing, as you mentioned, which is affecting real estate, new home market, home availability, uh, materials have gone through the roof. Mm -hmm. We're seeing some forms of material, especially natural wood. So what's the average right now, uh, material going up? Um, in some cases, um, it's gone up 500% in the last oh my days. God. A two That's by so... four in Home Depot used to be a dollar. It's now five. Oh my God. Yeah, um, metal's gone up 300% in some cases. Um, actually, I talked to one of the biggest shingle suppliers in the United States today who's based here in Dallas. They have, they're, they're completely out of the second largest major brand of shingle in the United States. They have none. And then flooring is out. G gone. Because you're just like big, 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 big uh, companies that are just coming, picking the big, yeah. big you know, the new. Yeah, the, the builders. Smaller guys, they get left out. They're because, getting completely left out. Right. You know, so um, the flooring is that that's the number one thing because all the flooding happening where people can't replace the floors right now because of that. And, you know, they're like, what the hell is going on? Well, there's no ships coming. There's no shipping coming. Right. You and, know, and from there, Asia. And well, there would have, have been no need for the amount of materials that we need right now. No one could have planned for that. Well, Canada's supply is down too, right? Is that not it? Yeah. Is that not true? Like, you know, Canada yeah. is the one of the biggest suppliers for lumber? They have a lot. They have a lot to do with that. Yes. Okay. They, their lockdown for COVID is substantially more extreme than ours too. Yeah, I mean, I think they're not. They're not. I think we're the only one in probably in the whole world. Texas is completely fully open. Pretty much. You know. Yeah, I have a friend that lives in Vancouver, and they can't even still can't eat even inside restaurants. They have to eat on a patio. Yeah. Wow. They're not allowed to leave the country. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. So. As crazy as it sounds, we're very fortunate from that standpoint that mm -hmm. we're at least getting an opportunity to get our economy back rolling. 
So, so insurance side of it, um, your company, um, yeah, you know, your contractor side of it, construction contractor yeah. side of it, you help people with the uh, insurance claims also? Tremendously. And I am very fortunate because I've done it long enough. And the first company that I worked for, when I worked for somebody else, we were a preferred vendor for nationwide insurance. And oh, I wow. made some yeah. really, really good friends that are all now retired from uh, major insurance work. And they're all independent adjusters or public adjusters, and they're all really good people. And so I'm very fortunate that if that happens to us, which it happens pretty often, I have a stable of people that I can bring into the mix to help them with that. So you have a great team around you. I'm very fortunate. Seasoned adjusters. Very seasoned. Very seasoned. And, you know, that's, that's the main thing. You, know, you got to have a good team around you. Um, in any business, you know, you got to have trusted, you know, people, and they, they stick with you. And it's not, I don't even call it a team. It's, I call it a family, yeah. you know, because if you just call it a team, you just call it a team. It's just a business, right? Right. right. So uh, I call it a family, all my real estate family, all my podcast family. Sure. Um, so with that said, um, you know, I want to get into a couple of uh, failures. I always do that. Sure. Um, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Let me just do a little bit of a real estate market update. And we've been talking about lumber and everything. Might as well just do that, right? Sure. Get knock that out of the way. So, um, real estate market update is brought to you by core four contractors. Um, that's, uh, Mr. Mike Burns, uh, roofing and contractors. Um, also in roofing, Mike is in roofing. Yeah. Um, you can connect with him. Um, his number is 817-996-1888. So what's going on with the real estate right now is, um, I've been telling you it's about 2000 new listings coming every week. Same thing happening since uh, December. We're getting an average of 2,000 homes a week in the whole DFW for yeah. since December. That's an average. And you know how many, how many people live here? We have quite a bit of a population here. Nine million? Was it nine million? It's getting there now. Texas? Yeah. All right. Close to it. Um, but this is just the Dallas market. I don't know. what. what fact check that. Uh, Peyton, what's the Dallas population right now? Real quick. Paint. DFW yeah. together has okay. got to be close to nine million. It's got to be. Uh, that's what we we searched before. Be. Okay, it said twenty nine. This is twenty nineteen. For da DFW. Oh, wait, no. Okay, here's twenty twenty. One million. It's six 1. million. 3. I got six million. Oh, this, is just, this is just Dallas. You want Dallas or DFW? Just DFW. Okay. Oh, the whole DFW. Metropolitan. While you're doing that, let me go ahead and go over the numbers real quick. Um, so we have about thirty three hundred uh, pending homes to close. Uh, about the same uh, since last week hasn't changed um, this week we had 3100 homes uh, sold in past seven days so it's very very low inventory right now new construction uh, what's going on with the new construction right now is that each builder they already sold out phase one and phase two and you cannot even buy a lot or you can't even be on a, you can pick a, you can't pick a lot. There's about 150, 200 people on the list and it's first come first serve. But you know, it's so many people per lot, just one lot. They're releasing three lots per, I'm talking about DR Horton. Right now, DR Horton, oh, by the way, let me update about DR Horton. Uh, corporate, not family, cause there's a difference. So DR Horton corporate is all of East of DFW Airport, East, closer to like, you know, Louisville, Plano, Frisco, all that is like, it just cuts it down in the middle. All the vests of DFW Airport is family rent. So two different products for uh, Deer Horton, right? Mm. Largest builder in, in, in the United States. Every fourth home is built by Deer Horton. So what they're doing now is actually, you cannot even get on a list. You have to get pre-approved through uh, DHI, uh, Dear Horton Mortgage, uh, you have to get pre-approved through them, and once you get conditionally approved, then they'll put you on the list. That's I just wow. found out about that. Wow. So you get to run, run your cre um, credit and get pre-approved and conditional approval, and then get on it. But you know, um, we have some other communities out there. They're going up. If you need to know about that, you can get a hold of me. My name is Ob with XPT Realty. 
My phone number is 682-313-2435. But like I told you guys last week, that your strategy should be right now, go ahead and sell your home. You're going to get about 20 to 30,000 over asking price, you know, uh, close to 20, 25. Um, if your house doesn't need any repairs, it's in good condition, you'll have multiple offers guaranteed. It'll be 10 to 15 people wanting to buy your house. Um, get your house listed, sell your home for like top dollar, get yourself a rental for 12 months. Go with me, go put your name on the list on multiple different communities that you think you will be okay with, uh, anything north, brand new. Um, you will make money off of that too because by the time you build the home and you close on it, the house prices for that house will go up 20, 30,000 mm -hmm. because builder prices are going. So you double dip that, this market. If you're a seller, you double dip it. You sell it now, make that you know profit off of your home. You go put your name on a list, Go to Toll Brothers, whatever you want to get that nice, nice home. Um, put your name on there, our grand homes, or Lennar, you know. Um, pick your plan, pick your floor plan, and everything else. That's a little bit difficult too. Like as far as like the, they're not doing any like you know you can't choose your own like cabinets and all of yeah, that. Yeah, I heard that. You yeah, know, that so you're, you're not th it. that's gone. Yeah, cause it's just because the shortage out. of la labor, yeah. and we talked about it earlier. Right. So they're just going in there and putting the best possible color scheme that they can. And because it delays everything. That's what the point right. is at the end right. of the day. Prices change. Um, but you're going to still get a brand new house with warranty. I mean, you can go sell it. You can go ahead and close it next year because you're not going to have a position on the house this year. It's going to take you about eight, nine months to build it. Any builders, at least eight months, minimum, minimum. Um, and you can close on that, and by the time you're gonna close on it, you're gonna make twenty, thirty thousand dollars because by that time it's gonna be already up, you know. So that's what you should be doing right now. And if you're interested in that, call me. My name is Ob with XPT Realty, and obviously, you know, thanks to our sponsor, Core Four Contractor. Get a hold of Mike uh, Burns, and that's our real estate, you know, um, segment. But if you just need to get a hold of me, just go ahead and do that. That's that's what we do, man. It's a little plug, you know. Sure. Little sponsors and uh, that was good advice, you know. So, but definitely people should sell their home right now and go buy a brand new one. You know, that's that's the way it goes. So, we're gonna talk about a little bit of failures. Okay. Okay. Sure. Not getting into too deep. I'm talking about business failures because a lot of <laughs> entrepreneurs, uh, personal failures. I mean, now we can. Talk about it maybe next podcast, That's fine. you know. That's fine. Um, I haven't, I have gone through a little bit of my personal failures with the audience, but I haven't gone through that deep, you know. So we're going to get into it one of these fine. days, you know. That's but, fine. So worst business decision you ever made? Oh, going into a business partnership with somebody that I did not know well. Oh, my God. And, uh. And it was a real partnership, and actually more than it, yeah, I made a collaboration once that was catastrophic, and then a partnership uh, that um, was um, ill-advised, and um, I didn't ask enough questions, didn't read the docs very close, mm -hmm. and it ended up being a complete disaster. And I only blame myself for that. And part of that was just complete inexperience. Mm -hmm. And and well, you trusted the person. I he, did. I did. You took the word. You know. Yeah, and, and I did, but I think at the same time, too, I saw a few warning signs, but when you're inexperienced, you're inexperienced. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times in life in general, relationships of any kind, whether it be business or personal, yeah. you want to follow with the way you feel a lot of times instead of what your head's telling you. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times in business, the devil's in the details of the paperwork, and um, unfortunately, mm -hmm. you make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And those were very, very, very costly. Yeah, very costly. Like start uh, I'm, all, start I'm learning all, that in my 38s and 39s. Yeah, you know, starting a little all bit over more again. Better, costly. you know. Um, I mean, any, any relationship you start off with, it's a risk. You of never course. know. Sure, it is. So you do have to dive. Regardless, relationship, business, or whatever. Sure. You think you're gonna sit on a corner and you know, and um, not pedal your boat? Ain't gonna take you to the other side of the lake, man. No, it won't. No, it won't. You still have to jump, regardless. It's, it's gonna. It's just part of it. But you, what you do afterward, 
and you analyze it once you're in and you start pedaling, you're like, okay, there's an alligator there. There's a dove right there. Which way I should go? You know, obviously, our, there's a middle ground, uh, which we would call a gray area. <laughs> you just reminded me of something. Uh, you may have heard the comedian Steve Harvey does a lot of motivational stuff. And he said that you still have to jump. And you made me think of this. And he goes, at some point, you have to jump. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you just have to trust that at some point on the way down, the parachute will open. Mm -hmm. But there is no choice but jumping. 100%, you know, for, for I all. I wish I'd come up with that, but I didn't. But. Um, yeah, <laughs> no. I mean, I mean, it's just, uh, I, I think it's more of like, you know, people are going to, you're going to hear things from people. It's just delivery uh, aspect of it is different. So come, even though he said it, you saying it, it will resonate completely oh, yeah. different to completely different totally audience. Totally agree. Uh, versus he's saying it. And it will resonate to a completely different audience because I you can be like superstar and if I don't like vibe with you, man. I totally agree. I don't care yeah. what you do. I don't care. You bring a dime over here right here. I'm not gonna accept it. It does just the human nature. Sure. You know, um, that's what you know. Chemistry and all that. Chemistry and tangible. Yeah. Right. All of that. You know. Sure. So, sure. Kind of like you know you we're herds. You know, humans are like herds. We we like to be in herd. You know, we're hard sure. beings, you know. You know, we like to stick to our kind, you know. Um, not like racist way, but I'm just saying like just people that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. people are just, you know, you're like-minded people. You sure. Know? You know, so. Um, so that's just one of them. So what what else? Uh, okay, so that's that's one of them. So that was a business decision. What was the worst business you have done <laughs> that you regret you shouldn't have started it? Like after you started it, like, hell, I, why, why? What was it like? Um, probably the fencing, um, the fence company. Fencing? Oh, yeah. I already yeah. knew it. I yeah, knew it that. was the fence company. I just like summertime in Texas, man. Zero research, just went in with nothing but emotion and you know heart and yeah, everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And was yeah. ill prepared, unplanned, inexperienced, and just basically dropped every ball that could be dropped. Are you in crypto? Uh, I am. Are you? I just got started. We all are in crypto. I just yeah. got Did started. you get put in money? I'm in Doge. You're in Doge? Okay. So well, your product. buddy Raza got me into it. Oh, yeah. I, I bought some. I just barely got started. Now, what did you buy? I can't even remember what we did two weeks ago. I just barely got started. I, 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 if I had my phone, I'd oh, tell you. I'd okay. tell you. I got in very small. I did, too. I mean, I put like $150. In it was this. something. Yeah, I think I did 100 in two different uh, ones that Raza yeah. got me started on. Sam, uh, Safe Moon. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Safe he moon. got me in safe he, moon. So they do have a really good platform, by the way. Yeah, they do. You know, they have a four quarter in, plan. I need to get in the safe moon. You guys need to get in safe moon. Don't let that train go. I told you already before the game. You haven't got into it. <laughs> um, but they have uh, at June fifteenth. By the way, they have an app coming out uh, where you're gonna be able to purchase safe moon directly. And then the later part of the year, they're coming up with, uh, they partner with a couple of different companies. They're going to come up with, uh, you know, their own exchange. So cryptocurrency exchange. Hmm. Hmm. Binance is one of them, right? But they're going to come up with their own. And they've been already audited from SEC. So they're already, you know, they're showing their tax returns here. You know, obviously it's not like, uh, what are the, what, what's the word for a crypto? Like, you know, it's not on a... Uh, like, you know, it's on blockchain, but, like, it's oh. not on a grid or whatever. But what is it called? You guys aren't even doing your research. You guys no, got... I know what so you're So he talking got me about. into... Jeremy and Joel, one of my buddy, they got me into crypto. Just recently, I bought, like, you know, um, Deutsch before Elon went on... Uh, and bought it all uh, up. And sold it. He's, he, uh, by the way, he canceled Bitcoin. Tesla's not taking Bitcoin no more. They dumped it. Why? Is that why Bitcoin's low? Right now, yeah, it went down. It, yeah. The it whole market was like crashed. Yeah, it, it dropped. 28,000, yeah. you know. So, you know, there's whales. They call it, you know, uh, big fish, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. They dumped a whole bunch of yeah. Bitcoin. It's very volatile. It's it's like uh, being in Las Vegas and gambling. It's gambling. Honestly, definitely. you know. You never know what's going to happen. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's like stocks. It's like yeah. Like I mean, if you do day trading, it's, it's, set up, it's set up like stocks, but it's played like gambling. <laughs> it's pretty much gambling. It's a hustle. That's what he called it. He called it, right? 
on Saturday Night Light Life. Uh, but but that's you were talking about multiple sources of income oh, yeah. uh, before we, we started the show. Yeah. So you're doing uh, roofing, you're doing uh, your uh, contractor stuff, and yeah. you, you're in crypto. What else are you doing? Uh, I'm also in the PPE space, gloves, mask, all that kind of thing mm -hmm. with a company out of uh, Houston. It's uh, Hilton Business Ventures, the grandson of Conrad Hilton. So I met that, Brad. Did you meet Brad? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I talk to Brad pretty regularly. Yeah. yeah. He lives down well, he did his little con, uh, like a little seminar thing. He was uh, oh, selling yeah. the uh, stocks for the company. Oh yeah. You know, back before COVID, and he came out here, so I met him. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but that's how I met Raza, which is how you and I met. Which yeah. Was in that space. Shout out to my Mr. Raza Bhai. Yeah. Hey, Raza. Raza big. He's been on the show, and uh, oh, yeah. has he? Yeah, he's been on the show. You got to ch check out his episode. He it was wearing the mask the whole time. <laughs> It was like literally in the beginning. Oh, it was last year, right? December. I still have one of those masks in my bag over there. Oh yeah, oh, and ninety five. He's selling his mask out of Houston. Yeah, yeah. From, his, from his mask yeah. uh, factory down there. Yeah, he wore it the his whole three time. Three flies. Yeah, the Patriot easy. mask, wasn't that yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Mask? American Patriot mask. American Patriot mask. Right? Yeah. So you do PPE? You run a factory out there? Or? No, no. We're just Ross and I are trying to broker deals. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, he was trying to do it for a long time. Yeah, you know? I mean, I don't do that, you know, every single minute of every single day. But but um, just we were heavy, heavy into it, and it's just it's not our participation. It's just it was the COVID thing, right? So it's still there, and I'm still working on it on a daily basis. But the market is not what it was, you know, because it was like mm -hmm. a gold rush, right? Right, very, very difficult gold rush. Um, but that's how everybody ended up getting into it. Because mm -hmm. we had a short-term market with this massive demand, and then you know it's not gone away completely. But it's not. It's not like everybody's wearing a mask. I mean, no, gone, there's so. a retail product coming out that you're going to find out about really soon that we're involved in. Um, that's going to eliminate mask completely. Okay, that's a teaser. All right, I'm like thinking what it could be. You well, have any? You guesses? won't know what it is. I'll show you after the show. I've got okay. one in the truck. Well, you don't have to show me like if it's some like a uh, no, no, like no NDA on it or no, whatever. No, there's no NDA. Okay, it's so, gonna be on TV. What is it then? Let's uh, talk about it. It's a product called My Air Shield, um, mm -hmm. and what it is is it's this little card that you can either clip on your pocket mm -hmm. um, or um, wear it around your neck. And it's an EPA approved product. Um, I believe the EPA's are, the approval just came out recently. I hope I'm getting that right. If not, I know that um, it's FDA approved. But it's uh, based on a uh, substance called chlorine dioxide. Mm -hmm. And basically, what happens is when you wear this thing, there's no odor. There's no, you know, obviously it's been tested. It's you know completely legit, and it kills any type of virus within about six feet of you. And um, that's crazy. I'm dead serious. I have a couple. Is it like any kind of like, you know, ramifications? I guess. Is it like FDA approved, you know, for. I, don't get me telling all the stories. I know it's if it's not yet, it's about to be. That's why okay. it's not out in America just Got yet. You. But it is out in other parts of the world. Wow. Mm. So, it's, I mean, yeah, I can see that. You know, I can see something like that. It just, uh, you know, make sure that there's nothing happening. Ariel, I'm assuming. Uh, no, you won't smell it at all. It just, it just, no, works. I'm saying that it'll eliminate aerial viruses. Oh yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Not absolutely. surface, not just, oh, just no. aerial. Just, just, I don't aerial. know about the surface part, but anything that would come out, you know, cause everybody, you know, cause of the, the droplets, uh -huh. that's why everybody's been wearing the mask. That's what we were told, right? It's to protect the droplets. You're protecting the it's other It's gotta be a badass right? product, man. Like if it can eliminate it from like millisecond from like coming from somebody's yeah, mouth. it's a retail thing. It's, like, it's, it's, it's not... Some, gone. You know, you're not gonna be able to get it. And I don't know how fast it's gonna make it. That's into, pretty cool though. Whoever came up with it is genius. Yeah, I don't know, you know? The people, but yeah, they are genius. There's a lot yeah. of geniuses out there. I mean, yep. You know, um, I always talk to people about that. You know, a lot of people are, are have ideas, you know? But, you know, the number one place where you can go get the idea is Graveyard. Yeah. You know, because a lot of people have the ideas, but they die with it, man. You, you got They're that. all there. And Les Brown said that. You're right? Yeah, yeah. So. So did Denzel Washington. There you go. Yeah. So. Um, but it's, it's, it's more of like doing it, going through the failures and doing like what Ron did. 
and you're hearing his experience, and he's going to be back on our show. He's going to be a friend of the show. Maybe he'll do a show. You can do a replacement for me. You know, you can just awesome. come sit in. I and, love that. Um, we can start doing that, you know. So, um, but you just got to keep going. And with that said, we, we are going to do our trash talk segment real quick. Um, I'm married to the game. Players never change. I got hustle in my veins. And I ain't been the same since I learned to slay. I ain't got no time to hang. You're into sports? Yeah. All right. So trash talk is brought to you by um, Every Angle Inspectors. Chris, Mr. Chris, um, call him at 469-573-3362. Every Angle Inspectors for your all your home inspection needs. By the way, he's a adjuster. Also, you want to mm. connect with him. It's he's good an adjuster and a home inspector? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, he's awesome. He does commercial also. Cool. Commercial inspection. So if you ever need it, he's, cool. he's a good guy. Cool. He's a good guy. He's been with me uh, for four years now. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, got and then he does podcasts with Jerry and everything. He's got a funny one though. So, how's the how's the podcast going for no, him? That's good. Yeah. He, no, it's not. It's shit. Tell him it's trash talk. <laughs> Tell him I said that. You know, he's, if he's watching, I'm gonna actually send him like you're. You didn't invite me, bro. This is gonna be trash talk. You know, Chris, you should have invited me. You were my first guest <laughs> on the show. I don't think he's actually had a guest though. I don't care. I want to be on so the I think podcast. He, I think he gets away with it right there because he actually hadn't had it. What are they talking so about? So maybe you, you still could. So they talk about uh, basically like house stuff, like the actual build of the house, what to look for, you know, if you're looking at your house. and Lame. You're wanting to know what's wrong with it. Lame. <laughs> Lame. No. no. Shots I, fired. I, I, Shots I, fired. I, I thought it was going to be a cool-ass podcast. They were Because he came on my show talking about mushrooms and racing cars and they're doing lame ass podcasts over there we're talking about houses how to build houses and <laughs> mushrooms you mean All like this. magic mushrooms yeah no he, he he's he grows it at the house don't disclaimer but just a limited amount whatever legal and you know <laughs> limit is uh so uh, wow that's a track uh, for sure no we actually like he's a really cool guy he's he, he used to be a race car driver Wow. Like, you know, he was into that, you know. What an interesting... From that to doing inspections. Well, you know what I'm finding is that's what... Go watch his episode. For a lot of people, it's like that. Go watch the episodes for for, for Chris's episode. Go check it out. You're going to laugh your ass off. We were laughing our ass off the whole time. Oh, my God. Uh, But, yeah, you suck, bro, by the way. Oh. Every Angle Inspectors, this is the sponsor. You know, um, all your home inspection needs, uh, call Chris. He's amazing, by the way, on home inspection part of it. Um, you just ran a ma- marathon. I did, two okay. weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that. You know, we're, we're, it, it is a sports segment. We call it Trash Shock because we like to do a little bit of Trash Shock. Yeah. Um, by the way, you're a football fan? Yes. What's your team? Uh, the Cowboys and the Texas Aggies. Okay, Aggies. Oh, AM, I've been to AM. Yeah. Nice. Uh the whole um, tour and everything. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So Marathon, tell us what was the experience like? And how what did you what made you guy get into the marathon part of it? COVID. COVID? Really? COVID, yeah, because I was really into lifting weights. You ran a marathon in twelve I ran months? Two, two no, of them in no, twelve I ran months? Two. I ran two. I ran one That's in December amazing. and just ran one two weeks ago. That is amazing, man. That's a man. Like you have to be really, really strong. I would have strong. never thought that I could do that. And what happened in COVID? When COVID hit in March of uh, last year, so mm-hmm. like 12, 14 months ago, fifteen months ago, uh, the gym closed, and I was about thirty pounds heavier than I am now. I was really into lifting weights, but I did basically no cardio, mm-hmm. and I had been doing that for a long time. And when the gym closed, I realized, man, if I don't do something, I said mm-hmm. I'm gonna get really really big really fast Mm -hmm. because i love to eat Mm -hmm. and um i started walking um and then started running and did a murph challenge if you guys know what that is no tell us about it i don't know a murph challenge is named after um a navy seal that died he was the like okay y'all seen lone survivor Mm -hmm. okay uh murphy is the last guy that died uh before the lone survivor was left he was the guy that went up and was trying to get you know help Mm-hmm. And um, he was a very famous guy, and he did his favorite workout was called the Murph, and okay. he would wear a twenty pound 
uh, armor-plated vest, which is part of like special forces gear. Okay. And then he would do um, uh, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, and 300 body squats in a row. Wow. And then would run a mile and then do that and then run a mile. And the goal was to do it in under an hour with the body armor on. I did not do it in under an hour. Mm -hmm. Mine was about an hour and 25 minutes, but I'm also 55 years old. Mm -hmm. And he was probably 25 when he Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. you know. But that got me motivated. And I went, man, I wonder if I could run a marathon. And I went on a 20 week training thing. It was brutal. I had a lot of injuries. I ended up having to go to a sports medicine doctor, but we got work through it. I ran a marathon in December and it was one of the most brutal things I've ever done in my life. Uh, my right knee was killing me. The last three miles took me like 55 minutes, mm. but I got done. I wasn't able to run more than two or three miles for a couple, three months. And the marathon that I was supposed to run in December was the White Rock Marathon. Mm -hmm. They postponed it because of COVID, mm -hmm. right? So I ran it anyway by myself. So in December, I ran the whole thing by myself and had a runner's watch to prove that I did it and took some videos on my phone, but there was nobody there. Mm. But it was pretty cool that I got it done. My neighbor, well, my neighbor saw me. It's a personal thing. Yeah, right? it was a total personal thing. And then I said I wasn't probably do another one. Then they moved the marathon to May. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to go ahead and do it again. And this time I only was training for 10 weeks and I got halfway through it and they canceled it again and moved it to December and I said, I'm doing it again. And this mm -hmm. time I had a buddy of mine come over and video me so that I could prove to everybody that I did mm -hmm. it. And this time I sent it out to like 50 people. Um, but that was a couple of weeks ago and then I'm not gonna do any long distance stuff for the summer and then I'm gonna train again in the fall and they're hopefully gonna run the real race mm -hmm. in December. And I, be so amazing. I've never run in a crowd. I've never run. With You're gonna people. have so much fun, right? Well, we'll yeah, see. You're addicted to it now, totally, right? It's You're like, yeah, it's it's pretty like cool. into it. I'm like, it take the only thing is can't it takes wait for December. A lot of time. Yeah, a lot, a lot of time. But well, congratulations! Thanks, I can't man. even walk to my mailbox. You sometimes. could, you could do it. If I can do Downstairs, it, you can do it. I yeah. promise. You. Uh, I mean, it's just a mental thing. It's just make a plan, man. Yeah, he's yeah. It's a mental thing. I well, think you just put more than just make a plan, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can talk to. about that another time. Um, if anybody wants to find out well, how to diet, do that, you have to like wash your diet and everything else, you know. And I mean, you have to be very disciplined. Yep. Very disciplined. Yep. So, kids, you know, doesn't <laughs> matter, you know, how many failures you have. You know, Ron is here sitting in front of you. He's fifty-four. He's running a marathon. He's already ran two of them, and he's gonna run another one. So if he can do it, you guys can definitely do it too. Without question. You know, so don't don't let anybody stop you from um, not achieving your dreams and hopes. So whatever you want to do, you want to be a biggest basketball player or biggest, you know, football player, or uh, you want to go into tennis, you want to go into golf, you know, you want to run marathons, you know, you want to be the next. Uh, what's the swimmer's name? Uh, Phillips. Oh, um, um, I can see his face right now. Come on, y'all. Phelps. Phelps. Phelps, yeah. You can do it. You can do it. It doesn't matter. You know, it just depends, you know. So you're at, in a really good stage in your life right now. Things are good. Yeah, you look happy, man. That's awesome. Things are good. Um, well, this is part of our, you know, programming. We do trash talk. Uh, we did a little bit of trash talk. We'll send it off to Chris, and he's our sponsor also. So that just makes it much more better, you know. And he, I sponsored, he sponsored this Eggman I trash talked to. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be hilarious when he gets this video. Well, thank you so much, Ron, for coming on the show, man. Um, I always tell my guests, you know, um, they get the last, you know, uh, minute or two to just like, you know, say whatever you want to say. Take the floor, you know, say the last word. You have advice for anybody. I, 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 I should have told you, no, so you should have no, been prepared. No, no, it's okay. I just I, like to throw it. At the end, so that way you you guys got off guard and you're going to no, come up with no, natural off guard's, stuff. No, off guard's fine because yeah. that's what life is. Life yep. is off guard. Yep. And, you know, we were talking on the break about some of the personal things that have happened to us. And mm -hmm. um, I don't know, you're not familiar with him, but if anybody else is that's interested in motivation... There's a Navy SEAL. His name is David Goggins. I think, is that the guy with the ball head when he yes, ran so? Yeah. That's I him. I cannot I know him. recommend him enough. The guy has changed my life. 
Um, I listened to him for hours while I was training for my first marathon. He has a book called Can't Hurt Me. Mm. And um, it's so brutal, his childhood and his upbringing, that during his childhood parts, I could only listen for maybe 10 or 15 minutes at a time. And the reason I'm sharing it is because he has a theory that most humans only go about 40% of their full potential. And this guy weighed over 300 pounds at one point um, and became a Navy SEAL in his early 30s, okay, which is extremely rare. Um, His story is unbelievably motivating, and it basically speaks to what you're saying, which is you can literally do anything. He's only the 37th African-American to ever be a Navy SEAL. He's also the only um, person in the history of the armed forces to be a Navy SEAL, an Army Ranger, and an Air Force uh, Special Forces. Okay, he's the only one. And his story is over, and you're nodding your head, you know who I'm talking about. And if you guys are into Joe Rogan, um, mm-hmm. he's probably one of his favorite guests. He's been on Tom Bill U, Impact Theory. Now that you brought up Marathon, I remember now. Uh, I've yeah. seen his uh, interviews and everything. I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah, he ran a 100-mile yeah. race before he ever ran a marathon. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so th- what you were saying is absolutely true. Um, it's not, you don't, failing is absolutely part of the deal. There, there's no way around that. Now, obviously, you don't go into any experience thinking, okay, I'm planning this is my failure. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, you don't do that. You, you give it everything you have. But what, when we're making goals, we don't realize that we're always saying, okay, Obi, if, Obi's thinking, if I do this, this, and this. We forget that there's a whole bunch of people around us who are all going through the same crazy life that we are and that there's going to be things that change constantly all the way through. And what is the determining factor is not living your life based upon your expectations of what something or somebody else is going to do and just accepting things for what they are. So when you make a business plan and your materials go up, Well, instead of being upset about that, that's just life. You roll with it, right? There's nothing you can do. There is so many intangibles that are going on around us. So the only thing that we can control is our attitude and um, our our level of optimism. And basically quitting is not an option. It's not because things are going to happen that you cannot foresee. And the only thing you can control is is your attitude. That's it. Life is 10% what happens to us and 90% how we respond to it. You know, Shakespeare had a quote that said, things are neither good nor bad, yet thinking make it so. So you could have a flat tire and you think, man, this is horrible. Well, then somebody could pull over to help you and the love of your life sitting in the passenger seat and that's how you meet her, right? It's all in the way you look at it. You never know what getting caught at a red light is going to possibly have a good thing come from it. It's all in how we choose to perceive it. We're the ones that create the way the world is around us. Wow. Does that make sense? That's that's amazing. Yeah. Amazing words. Amazing wisdom. Amazing person. <laughs> you're definitely going to host this show one of these days. <laughs> I'd love to. You know, because I think you're going to have so much fun. Um, and you get to pick your own guest. Oh, cool. You can bring your own guest. So you can take over. It's going to be a Ron takeover. Maybe script and make you sit over here. I'm going to do a <laughs> takeover. Ron takeover. Um, there's only a couple of few people I offer this, by the way. You're in one of them. Thank you. You know? I appreciate that. Uh, I'd love to do it. Otherwise, I will just sit here. I'll be like, uh-uh, you ain't touching my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, thank you, audience. Uh, anybody uh, listening on uh, podcasts, um, all my uh, people outside in your international family, uh, I know you guys listen to podcasts, and I do get, like, you know, analytics on it. Like, you know, we have about 11 different countries people listen to our podcast wow. so far right now. That's amazing. Um and um, thank you so much for, for that. Um, remind me, Jerry, to thank them on the next show earlier than this, you know. Um, and all the people that support us, all our sponsors, um, and uh, everybody on Facebook. Um, everybody has a, have a blessed day. Thank you, Ron, for coming on the show. My pleasure. Um, and uh, this is Real Talk. My name is Obi with XPT Realty.